what is fibromuscular dysplasia or FMD? So uh, arteries are built in a certain way and I, I always tell patients that they're built like onions with layers of cells and when those layers of cells are not laid down uh, the way they're supposed to you get some abnormality and sometimes that's called FMD. Um, some of these abnormalities were described under the microscope uh, 80 years ago now and uh, in those days they used to make the diagnosis by looking under the microscope when they saw the typical finding they would call it FMD. Uh, or fibromuscular dysplasia. Um, after, uh, after a while, angiograms came about. They used to inject uh, patients with, uh, with dye, and they noted that certain appearances on imaging correlated with those pathological findings, with those findings under the microscope. And so they stopped looking at specimens, and nowadays we, we don't look at specimens. And nowadays we infer the diagnosis of FMD by, uh, from typical imaging studies. Uh, nowadays uh, we almost always do not need to do an invasive study to make the diagnosis of FMD. And more usually we get the information we need from other studies like a CAT scan, a CT, or an MRI. Um, FMD typically uh, is diagnosed in middle-aged people, more commonly women than men, in about a 9 to 1 ratio that repeats itself in almost every series that's been looked at. Um, we don't know exactly when it, is, uh, when it forms in the body. We think it forms around the uh, uh, third decade, so that means somewhere in the patient's 20s. And we think that whatever it is, that the, th whatever the arteries that are affected in the patient's 20s kind of goes with them throughout their lives. Uh, and, and we believe that the diagnosis is made in, uh, around middle age, as I said, around uh, when, when, when a patient's about 50, 51 years old is sort of the uh, average over time. We think that's when the diagnosis is because that's when imaging is obtained for another reason or because symptoms symptoms appear uh, uh, in some of these patients. Um, FMD can affect any artery of the body. Uh, it's been described in, uh, in any artery from the brain to, to the legs, uh, to the arms also. The two most common arteries it's effect, uh, that, uh, that FMD can be found in uh, is the renal arteries, the kidney arteries, and the uh, uh, carotid arteries, the neck arteries, the cervical arteries. Those are the two most common places where, where FMD can be found, but it can be found in any artery of the body stating that FMD can be as common as 4% of the female population. Uh, there's data from uh, uh, cadavers, there's data from uh, kidney donors where FMD was found in the kidney artery and as many as, as I said, 4% of those donors. Um, when, when it comes to actual clinical presentation of these patients, that's much less as you've, as you've alluded to, so it's a rare disease. Uh, there's been a, just recently last month a publication from the uh, National Inpatient Sample, which basically means how much was the code FMD used in patients that were admitted to the hospital. and in in, in the whole of the United States over the span of, of over 10 years it's been only found in about 2200 patients so it's uh, very uncommon from that uh, perspective um, uh, also uh, in the FMD registry which is the main registry in the United States now looking at patients with FMD collecting their data uh, overall we, we uh, have uh, you know the numbers of the number of patients that we have is in the hundreds not in the thousands so when it comes to kind of clinical presentation uh, it's it, it is a rare disease but when it w when you think about the potential for diagnosis it's probably not as rare as we think it is it's probably kind of glossed over on imaging studies and and I can tell uh, and I, I can tell you uh, and the viewers that um, very commonly uh, FMD is seen incidentally when something else is looked for in an imaging study and in centers like ourselves uh, radiologists were uh, um, looking for it find it very commonly actually